principal past experience was at the Eastman School in Rochester, New York. I had a benefactress from Pueblo, Colorado, where I lived, and my teacher uh, influenced her thoughts toward sending me toward, to the school. So that my entire education at the Eastman School was financed by this lady whose name was Mrs. Thatcher. She belonged to an influential family in Colorado. And so it was a wonderful opportunity for me, of course, to be able to work that way freely. And my parents, my father was a Presbyterian minister, so that uh, his salary was not a great one. And it helped them, of course, through those four years of undergraduate work and two years of graduate work. Then after I graduated from the Eastman School, I received a fellowship to be a, a graduate fellow. So I stayed on and did some teaching as my duties as a fellow. And uh, at that time I kept learning how to teach the organ. And at that time also, the man who was on the faculty of the Eastman School, Mr. De Cole, the Frenchman, decided he would return to his home in France. And it was decided that I should stay on and teach the students. He taught many students, uh, he taught organ majors, but he also taught uh, students who were not organ majors. So I took over that work that he had. After that, I was able to play some recitals. I enjoyed that very much and the school encouraged the faculty to play recitals in the countryside. So I made some tours also. And that was hard work, but great fun. I had a uh, recital at one, the last big organist convention before the Second World War, which was a fortunate thing for me because there was not an opportunity to play in such a setting for many years but I played at the Washington Cathedral. I was told that, uh, well, Charlotte Garden told me that they were having a meeting deciding who, who should play for the cathedral. And she said, come on, let the women in here. Put in a woman, put in Gatherine Crozier, have her play. So they said, well, all right, I guess she intimidated them and uh, Suddenly I was playing my recital at the Washington Cathedral. And when I finished that recital at the cathedral, then uh, Mr. LaBerge of Colbert LaBerge Management had attended and he wrote to me afterwards and said that he should like to have place me on the uh, roster. In time, I married my teacher, Harold Gleason. He was my teacher from the beginning of my experience at the Eastman School. We were married, I believe, in 1942 and stayed on through the school, to the school, and then we decided that we would move. After working for some time at the Eastman School, my husband was the uh, head of the graduate department, and I played a recital at Rollins College in Winter Park, Florida. The man who was in charge of the music there was a former student of my husband, Mr. Huffstadter, Robert Huffstadter, and he wrote to me to say that they had a position open there at Rollins, and did I know anyone? <laughs> so I thought, yes, I do know somebody. So I went down to see about that, and we decided that that would be a good place to move. So we left the Eastman School. Everyone was a little bit shocked about that. We left the Eastman School and moved to Florida. And it was a, a wonderful life. We stayed there about, I think it was about 14 years. And I was the organist of the chapel all of that time. And one thing that interested me very much was the fact that they had a series of Vesper recitals at Rollins. They called them Vesper recitals because they came around four, five o'clock in the afternoon, every Wednesday afternoon. And the idea was to attract an audience from the winter visitors who came to Florida every year. So we had a nice time with those programs and my husband had many ideas about uh, various combinations with the programs. 
and he wrote all the program notes. So I gave or the organ recitals, but he wrote the program notes, and also occasionally we would have other organists come in and other instrumentalists, so that we varied the programs considerably, and it seemed to make a hit with the community. And so that was great fun, and that went on, as I said, for 14 years. Then after that, we decided that it was time to go on to another life, so we went out to California. He had grown up in California, so he looked forward to that with great pleasure, and we went to, uh, first to La Jolla. He, had, he said that when he was a small boy, he had always wanted to go to La Jolla because it was such a uh, resort place. And we stayed there a few years, and, and I was able to practice at one of the organs there and still make my tours. In California, my husband died when we were living in uh, Claremont. I stayed a while, and then I decided to leave California. And I had played recitals, of course, around the state, and I'd played in Portland, Oregon also, liked the organ there very much. I remembered that. So I went back to Portland to see what I'd think about moving back there and stayed there a few days, looked around and decided that that was a place to go. So I packed up everything and drove up to Portland with some help from some friends. And I've been there ever since and I expect to stay because I like the area very much. And there's a fine it was a church when I first went there, the Trinity Episcopal Church, but it has now been made into the cathedral. And so I have a, a title, the resident organist at Trinity Cathedral, which I guess in itself gives me the uh, privilege of practicing when I wish. And I practice there about what I can practice, if I want to, uh, three days a week on the beautiful Manuel Rosales organ. Beautifully placed and voicing is excellent. And that's always a great pleasure. I give lessons there occasionally too. And there are musical programs there at the Trinity Cathedral. John Striga, who was the master of the music uh, program in the cathedral, was a student of Arthur Poister in Syracuse. So we've had reminiscences of, of that part of the country and our experiences there. And also the uh, dean of the cathedral was from Rochester. So it's a sort of uh, home family <laughs> in the cathedral. We have a good time, but we all have the same um, objectives so far as the music is concerned. So there are many programs that take place there and many lectures, of course, and, and uh, the services are always just fine. So I feel very fortunate indeed. My name is John Strage, and I'm the director of Cathedral Music here at Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in Portland, Oregon and welcome. I would like to mention that the occasion here is to honor Catherine Crozier, and it is great to have Catherine in our midst here at the cathedral. Not only do I have a resident organ coach, but we also have a wonderful person who adds so much to our liturgical celebrations here at Trinity. I would like to introduce to you now the dean of our cathedral, Bud Thurston. Uh, Catherine, it was really great the other day on Sunday to be able to uh, indicate as we had choir <laughs> recognition uh, what important role you play in this place, uh, having come here a few years ago. Um, and also what a tremendous privilege it is for us to be able to, to, to have you as a friend, as a parishioner, as a person who plays this magnificent organ. Um, as you and I know, we've known each other for a long time, actually mm -hmm. from Rochester, uh, New York, where you're going to receive this wonderful award. It's a well-deserved honor for you, and I'm very proud. Well, thank you very much. I'm very proud of you for this. When I came to Portland, I knew I would enjoy it very much, but I didn't realize 
what a great thing it would be to be here associated with the cathedral life and uh, everything about it. I just love to be, sit back there in the nave and listen to the beautiful services, the service itself and the choir too. Everything makes a contribution to the uh, beauty of the surroundings, which are very fine too. And of course there is this fine organ, so I feel indeed very fortunate. 